It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much for inviting me. So the details of regulatory support are important, and they must be developed around each country's electricity goals and electricity smart grid goals. And the goals for different countries may be different. So I think that's what underscores the point that I wanted to make today, that while it's important to learn from others, what's right for others might not be what's right for India. But some things in electricity regulation are universal and are right for every country, including the goals of regulation, to protect the public interest, to ensure reliable service at reasonable costs, and to allow utilities a fair return for providing a public good and a public service. The other universal is that electrification of a nation is the key to its success. The one single metric that defines a nation's economic success, health and welfare of its people, and its ability to compete on a global scale is electrification. And on this graph, you see the GDP per capita uh, curve versus the electricity use per capita. And there's a high correlation between the two. This is a little um, graphic of the United States and of its regulation. And I included it here to show that even within the United States, what has been deemed to be the right regulatory approach in one state and in one region is not agreed upon by all states and all regions. And we have various approaches to regulation. And they work depending on what the region's goals are. We've moved from a vertically integrated electric utility system regulated as one machine to unbundling generation transmission and distribution under cost-based regulation in many of our states, but not all of them. The US became fully electrified after World War II. It embarked on that process in the end of the 1930s, and it, it took a while. In the 1990s, after having experienced full electrification and increasing economies of scale, the US business model and the regulatory thinking began to shift to more competition, particularly in generation, and more unbundling of the electricity services into generation, transmission, and distribution. And we began to experiment with building competitive wholesale electricity markets. The first one to really go after that goal was California. And we learned a lot from California. We learned what was right, but maybe more importantly, what was wrong about the California market. At the detailed level, we understood that some of the market rules that California put in place were fatally flawed, and they didn't work. But the bigger lesson, I think, to be learned from California experience is that California didn't do a pilot project. They decided in advance, we're going to create a market. And California's legislature created that market out of theory. And it enshrined that theory in rules in the legislation and it gave it to the California ISO to approve and to implement. And the California ISO did a good job, I think. Actually, I worked there in the year 2000. Um, but the rules were wrong. And trying to wedge the market into predetermined rules didn't work well. So um, actually, as you look at the map of the US, you can see that the colored map at the bottom are where existing wholesale bid-based auction markets exist. And we have resurrected the one in California, but the rest of the Western United States is white. They were so traumatized by the California experience, they haven't done anything. Although, actually, to be fair, seven states around California 
are now talking about joining the California ISO. So what's my point? Again, it's important to think about what our goals are, where we are and where we're going. And I agree, um, as you can see from this slide, 100% with what Rahul said at the beginning of this conference, that in India, growth is the key. So some electrification aspects of India and other countries are the same, but a number of them are different. And I'm just um, comparing and mostly contrasting in this slide some of the differences between India and the US. And as you can see here, growth in India is the key differentiator. India is growing at 5 to 7% per year. The US is not growing. In fact, last year, the statistics just came out, and sales of electricity in the US decreased 1.1% last year. Um, and they've decreased in most of the last 15 years. So the US is, is not growing in electricity. Most of the growth comes is from the um, revolution in generation, in the closing of our coal plants, which are old, um, and most of them, not all of them, fully depreciated, and the replacement of those with different kinds of baseload generation, as well as new distributed energy resources and renewables. India, on the other hand, expects 200 to 300 gigawatts of growth in the next 10 years. So in India, you are looking at how to incent the proper investment in critical energy infrastructure, and that's one of your regulatory challenges. Um, in the US, we have done that in part, in parts of our country, through, through the creation of markets. But our experience with markets has shown that it's not perhaps or the only effective mechanism to electrify the nation. And going forward in the US, we are debating whether the old concept, the more robust concept of public utility should be used to enable the new developments. And what are the new developments? Well, there are on our boundary here and looking forward significant new developments available to the electric industry. Information technology and computing power that wasn't where it is today even five years ago. More variable energy resources. Increased distributed generation. And that is what New York is now discussing with the New York REV project given this new world of increasing distributed generation, what should we be thinking about for our regulatory structure? We're also looking at environmental goals and mandates, particularly fewer carbon emissions. And the other advance that we have seen significantly is a marriage of smart grid communication development with technology development automated demand side management, maturing into a true capacity asset and grid resource. So as we look to unlock the potential of this new technology, there are two approaches being discussed in the US. One is using the traditional paradigm of public utility regulation, particularly distribution utilities under the traditional framework to coordinate and plan for a future of more distributed energy resources and automated demand management systems. The other is a debate. It has not actually played out yet, but it is a question that New York has raised. Can we take the market paradigm that we've used with success at the wholesale generation, the wholesale sales and large scale generation level and move it to the distribution end. New York is posing that question and New York is undertaking what I approve of, um, is undertaking to, 
to look at it differently than California did through pilot projects to try and identify before we change our regulation what the goals are, what the values are, and then talk about how the best to evolve the best regulatory structure to achieve it. What we're able to do today that we couldn't do even five years ago is create resources to both balance supply and demand within our utility system, particularly fully automated demand side management and including distributed energy resources as part of that software platform that can be um, um, overseen by the distribution utility and perhaps controlled. What is the advantage or the advantages of automated demand side management? Well, today, I think the best way to look at it is that it is on an equal footing with generation. It is fully automated, it is two way, it is verifiable in real time, and it can be dispatched by the utility. It has great promise that our past demand side resources have not had. One of the enduring problems as we've evolved our electric system over the last 100 years is the low duration curve problem. As you see on this curve, which is representative of most nations in the world, a high percentage of generation, typically 20%, that's what it is in India, um, serves only a small number of hours in the year. 20% of our investment in generation or more serving 438 hours of the year. That's a very expensive way to serve our peak. What ADSM can do is serve that peak significantly cheaper and solve our low duration curve problem. Two minutes, please, if you could. The, the important point is to learn from others around the world what has and has not worked. India is growing and it's enabled to leapfrog beyond what other countries have done by looking at their successes and their mistakes. In summary, the details will need to be worked out by the regulators and other countries' experiences are helpful, but we know what the goals are. And I think that in India, there are seven of them. First, to align our utility, consumer, and regulatory goals. Second, to continue to make electrification of the country a top priority. Third, to look at detailed regulatory structures to incent the investment that we want. To provide India with new technologies that are able to put it at the forefront of the world. To give full equivalent treatment to ADSM, which has become a full equivalent to generation. Doing this will lead to a robust, stable, reliable, optimized grid that also enables customer participation at the edge of the grid through demand management and distributed energy resource integration. Thank you very much.